Hey everyone, Eric here. And today, I want to show you how to create a stylized look for your documentation drawings using just SketchUp and Layout. So let's start by backing up a bit and explain where the inspiration for this idea came from. During one of our bootcamp roadshows, I had a student who wanted to emulate the style of Marion Mahoney Griffin, who was one of the first female licensed architects and the first employee hired by Frank Lloyd Wright. In fact, it's her architectural drawings, as you can see here next to me or behind me, that most people think are done by Wright. And what she does so well here is the combination of plan, elevation, and perspective onto just one sheet. Also, the muted paper color tones that she uses, it allows the highlights and the shadows of the buildings to really pop out. So that's what we're going to create together now. OK, so those are my reference images. I don't need those for now. I do want to explain my SketchUp model here really quick, just what I did to set this up. Not very much, actually. Um, I have a simple house, and I put two trees in. I just kind of wanted the trees to frame the house in. So I have it in plan view, which basically, if I toggle my section cut, you can see I have a section cut. I can toggle that on and off using keyboard shortcuts. And I have a perspective view. So the perspective view probably want to be more centered. I'm not sure why it shifted over there like that. So I'm going to update that so it's more centered on my page. And style-wise, I actually have only two styles. I have my default style, which I've edited to sort of have brown lines to look like it was you know old, like sepia colored. And then I have this x-ray style. And I'll explain why I set that up in a minute. It's because uh, I wanted the trees to be see-through, but I don't want my building to be see-through. So I kind of need two different styles, one where the building is not see-through and one where the trees are see-through. And that's why I'm using this x-ray mode. So you'll see what I'm when we get into layout how that actually works. So this is the final product. Again, I'm not actually trying to copy everything. I'm just sort of using this reference of the elevation and the plan are together along with a little perspective. I've got these faded trees and some graphics. So let's talk about sort of the thought process for how to bring all that stuff together. Let's start by opening up a new one. I already know I've set this up before. It's a tabloid portrait, so 11 by 17. And here's my blank one. So this is where I get to start by grabbing a reference image. So it doesn't really matter what it is. In this case, I just have this paper here. I'm just going to pull this paper texture in. And this is going to be my background. So this is going to be my background paper. So I've got my grid snap off. I can turn that on if that's helpful. Sometimes it depends on what I'm trying to do. Sometimes I need that. Sometimes I don't. And I'm going to go pop over to layers just out of good habits. I don't need one on every page for this. And I do need one that's called background because I do want to separate out. You don't have to do this, but like when I'm working with paper textures and things like that, I like to put that on a background layer. And the reason why is because I can lock it so I don't accidentally move it or I can toggle it on and off, which might be helpful in just a few minutes. So I've got my default layer, I've got my background layer, and pretty much that's it. Everything's going to be working on the default layer from here on out. So let's just go ahead and close that unless we want to toggle our background layer up. Oh, one thing on this note about layers here is that if you wanted to, like if this was too saturated, we have two choices. Since we can't control the transparency of an image reference in layout, we can either do it in Photoshop or something like that, bring it in. Or if you wanted to, you could create another layer, which I'm calling fade. This is just sort of a in-between layer. And then if I pop over to my rectangle tool, I'm using my keyboard shortcut. So if you don't see me go to the rectangle tool, that's why. And then what you can do is you can control the transparency of solid colors. So if this way, if I wanted just a little bit of that paper texture, but not so dark, like if I wanted to lighten that up just a little bit, which I think looks pretty good, then I have that on a fade layer. And again, you can choose um, whether or not you want to do that. All right, so now we're ready to put our SketchUp model in. So I'm going to pop over to my references. I do have a SketchUp model, the one I just showed you. I just drag and drop it, and there it is. So by default, it's remembering that I'm starting with my elevation view. So I'm actually going to start with the plan instead, because the reason why is that I want the plan to be the one that sort of, I want to set the plan first, and then I'll set everything else after that. And because the plan view, it's a site plan, it should be to scale. I'm using, for this paper size, I think 3 16 if I can find that, equals one foot is sort of what fits, because I need to leave space around the edges 
uh, for all those dimensions and things like that. So this is where we get to sort of make an aesthetic choice in the process. I'm centered the plan here. I've got the scale. Looks great. I like the way that my I changed my my section cut color to sort of be this sepia brown a little bit. But I'm in raster by default, which is the rendering mode in layout. Now, if I wanted to, I could switch that over to vector. And what vector is going to do, it's going to use only the lines and it's not going to use that face style. So it's going to let the paper texture show through. Now, that's just an aesthetic decision. So if I wanted to, again, I could go back and say, I want actually want the, the that fill to be in there. So I could go ahead and use the raster or I can use the vector. So the next step is to put two more drawings in. So because I did the plan view, I'm going to say that's where I want the plan to be. I'm going to copy using keyboard shortcuts, paste using keyboard shortcut. When it pastes by default, it pastes right on top. And I'm going to switch coming over to my SketchUp model section, switch to back to that elevation view. What's cool is that it remembers, um, layout remembers the scale. So I don't have to go in and tweak that or anything. I don't have to change that again. So I'm just going to shift this over a little bit. And I'm not going to worry about my trees. And here's why. is because I actually am thinking about my trees separate. And this is where I actually will use. I will switch from vector to hybrid. And sorry, not hybrid. Do I want hybrid? No, I want raster. I mean, the reason why I want raster is because I want to see through, uh, it, through the window transparency and into the, the building or into the house. But in this case, I don't want my trees because you remember how I just said in a minute ago when I was in SketchUp, I set up a separate style just for my trees. So I'm going to switch over to that style now. Excuse me, I missed a step. First thing I need to do is come into my tag override, which by the way, I love that the newer versions of layout, if you're on an older version, you won't be able to do this, but the newest versions you can do, the last few, you can tag override stuff. And so in this case, I'm going to turn the trees off I don't have to go back into SketchUp to do that. I'm going to copy this elevation, paste it right in on place, and now I'm going to do the opposite. So I actually have two. If I shift this, I have two of this um, house. But in this case, what I'm going to do is turn everything off of the one that's sitting on top, except for turning the trees back on. And the cool thing about this, about doing it this way, is now, because I have the trees, separate from the house, I can change, I can give them a different style. So I'm going to override the default style and I'm going to give them that X-ray mode style, which not only gives it a really kind of soft color, but you can see if you look really close, you can see that parchment paper is coming through in the background. So I'm liking the way that looks. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to try and do this a little bit quicker since I'm kind of repeating the process. This time I'm going to switch over to that perspective mode and I don't know, because it's perspective, you don't have, um, and I think I should probably put the trees on just so I kind of understand where the trees are. But remember, I'm not locked. If I break the, if I separate them onto their own, I can, um, I can control those individually. So this here is a little bit of the trickier process. It's not orthogonal. So I'm just kind of eyeballing the scale as far as what I think looks good. I just kind of want to lock it into that corner. I don't want to cover too much up. OK, that's fine. Now I can click Preserve Scale. Now I can change that bounding box to make sure that the bounding box is only sort of what I need. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to come over here, turn those trees off, paste that back right in place, turn everything off in that view because now I've duplicated it. So I have just the trees on this one. Style override. You can see that once you've sort of done this, it's a little confusing the first time you've done it because it takes a little bit of trial and error. But once you've done it, oh my gosh, it's so easy. It's so quick. So this is basically it. This is my layout. Now, the next thing, the cool thing about layout, the advantage of using layout versus just trying to do this in SketchUp is that now we can use our dimension tags. So it's got a live link. So if I zoom in here and if I start dimensioning and pull this out, you can see that's basically it's trying to round up to five foot. Um, now, because this is about stylizing and not dimensioning, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to come back over to my view that I already have completed. And I'm going to go ahead and just paste that. And it should drop in. It's not going to line up exactly, but that's OK. I'm just going to go ahead and shift that and just kind of get it somewhat to the right location. I think that's good enough for right now. You can see I do need to lift 
both of these up to match where my perspective line, sorry, my my measurement lines, there we go, to match my dimension lines. And that's okay that I'm cutting my trees off. Okay, so let's go ahead and think about taking all of this and shifting it down a little bit so I didn't lose those trees. You'd think, okay. Now the last thing I wanna do, actually I've got a couple more things I wanna do. I wanna create a border and I wanna put those trees in that you saw from my other example. So I didn't do those trees. You notice I only have the two that I put in, uh, these pink ones, but in plan view, I actually want a plan view symbol, which is great because we've got the scrapbook. So I don't need my SketchUp model. I'm gonna go pop into my scrapbook and I'm gonna see under here, you can go all the way down to trees plan and then there's a bunch of different ones. In this case, I'm just using the assortment and I'm just gonna grab one here and drop it into place. Now I'm going to also at the same time, make sure that that's selected and I'm gonna find my sepia color that I was using. I can either use a kind of a medium brown or a really light brown. If I zoom in, you can see, so you can either fade it using the color or uh, using opacity or what you can do is just use like a darker or a lighter color. In this case, I'm gonna use this sort of lighter color or you can mix and match, copy, paste that around, just hold shift. In this case, these trees aren't corresponding to where they are in the plan. They're just sort of decorative um, to, to fill up space on the page. Okay. All right, now that that looks pretty good, I'm going to end this by putting a border. I just want to switch over to the rectangle tool and just figure out where that offset is. I'm going to, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and take the fill out. I'm gonna change the stroke color to this kind of sepia brown that I've been using. And I wanna bump that up to, let's just say 1.5. So it's not too, too thick. Now I wish there was a way that I could sort of tell um, layout to not cross through some of the objects on the page as far as this rectangle, but there isn't. So this is kind of where if you're just in a, in a Zen mode, you just click, click, and I won't say click for each of these, but I'm using the split tool, which is the one that looks like a knife. That's S keyboard shortcut. And I'm just coming in here and I'm splitting uh, not everywhere, but just a few spots so that the border and the, um, and the sort of objects on the page start to interact with each other a little bit. Totally optional, don't have to do that. I think it's just kind of a cool look. Also on that same note, while I'm doing this, you could do the same thing. Now I'm cutting the lines to basically show that they're not going through the trees. And also I would wanna do that, the text as well. I wanna cut that. Sometimes you have to zoom in, pro tip. If you can't get it, like with layout, if anything's giving you a hard time, it's probably just because you're zoomed too far out. So if you just zoom in a little bit, nudge that over. There we go. So it lines up. That's fine. Okay. So yeah, if you're having a problem, just go ahead and zoom in and then grabbing that endpoint or finding something to cut should be super simple. The reason why I wanted to do all of this, this sort of stylistic edits in layout versus going to something like Photoshop is let's just go pop back into SketchUp. Let's wrap up by popping back into SketchUp. And let's for some reason say, um, I don't know, maybe this roof does. Yeah, maybe this roof does get a little bit thicker. So if I scale this up, I'm just gonna scale this up a little bit like that. So you can see here, it's going to be, it's gonna look a little bit different. Say I wanna add like some natural ventilation or something. I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna pop over back into my layout, right click it, update the model reference. And you can see it's going to update both here it did, it updated here in the elevation. Of course, if I changed a wall, it would update in the plan and you can see it updated um, It updated here as well. Yeah, so I like that. I think that's looking pretty cool. So that's it for creating a stylized look in layout using just layout actually. Uh, something I like to do is stay in SketchUp and layout for as long as possible and reduce the need to go to another program to add that special effect layer. So hopefully you learned something new in this video. You liked something you saw. If so, go ahead and like, share, subscribe. Of course, comment. We do read the comments. We like to respond to them. So let us know what you found interesting and we'll keep the conversation going there. Thanks as always and see you next time.